great. Good win for the good guys, man. This was one, in spite of all the penalties, in spite of all of the issues that we thought we were tough enough to come up and get a win on this one. Huge gutsy, win for the program. Gutsy win. When we needed it most, the offense went and got it, and the defense pulled up and got a stop. Penalties, turnovers, mental mistakes, all of them overcome in the last five minutes. That was a big time drive with a little over four minutes left and most of the field to go. Terps stepped up and won a game that they wouldn't have won in the past. And th to me, that's a huge step forward for this program. This is awesome. Good atmosphere here, too. Good time. Well, that is Mark and Justin Murphy reporting live from Memorial Stadium. This is the Big Dog Post Game Show. I'm Wayne Viner. Mason will be coming in a moment along with Bruce. Uh, Mason, uh, part of our nationwide coverage, what did you see from Jacksonville that, that turned you on at the end of the game? Yeah, I saw a team in rhythm, and that's what it's all about for Coach Loxley's offense. And, and that's what we talk about a lot is the rhythm of the plays – hitting your targets, it's all on timing. And uh, Leo was able to step up to the pocket a couple of times, wasn't too rattled, made the simple plays, and, and you saw the results I think all of Turp Nation was looking for. A 2017 win. Uh, guys, I'm, I'm going to throw this to Justin if he can hear me. How nervous were you when Maryland was trailing 17 to 10? Uh, it's difficult for us to hear because the, the speakers are right in our ears. But I'll end it this way from uh, from Champaign, Illinois. Great win for the for the Terrapin football team. Huge step forward. Boy, I tell you what, sets the table for the next couple of games. We take care of business next week against Kent State. Wait till we get back there for October 1st against Iowa. That, that huge step forward for the Terrapins tonight. All right, guys. Thanks for joining us. We'll let you go have a good time. And uh, welcome in Bruce Posner, Mark, Justin. We will see you back in College Park. Absolutely, right. Wayne. Thank you, Wayne. Okay, Mason, take care, buddy. So that was uh, Mark and Justin live from Memorial Stadium in Champaign. Uh, it reminds me of when Maryland went to Georgia Tech so many years ago, trying to go, I believe it was 5-0 and uh, under Freegen's first year and win that game with a field goal in overtime. There were many moments there when I wasn't sure this was going to happen tonight. Mason, no. uh, Bruce, it it took a, a real rev up of that offense to score ten points down the stretch. You know, this game was over when when the uh, Maryland came out in the second half. A great scripted drive by uh, Dan Enos and Loxley, I'm sure, to get the ball right back. They go down the field like a knife goes through. His goes through butter, and then the fumble. I have never seen a game turn like that. All of a sudden, Illinois couldn't do anything wrong on, on offense, got every break in the world. Uh, I just I can't even imagine what happened that the team shut down until there was X amount of time left in the game. About 57, Maryland got rolling. What happened to the offense, Wayne? They did another punt, punt, fumble, fumble. You know, and then, of course, they got a break on that touchdown. Illinois did when the guy fumbled. They picked it up and ran it in. But am I crazy, or should this game not have been that close? Uh, look, you're, you're the first one to say when you go on the road and you haven't been on the road and there's fans there and it's a different atmosphere – that's what, what tests you, especially in this conference, and it did tonight. I was just worried that they weren't going to get started up. The talent is there, Mason, but every once in a while, they throw in four, five, or six possessions when they can't get a first down. Yeah, Wayne, and I think that the reason that they fought back in this game where you haven't really seen them ever put it together, if you go back to the Temple game from a couple years ago, is continuity. You know, we have a lot of the same coaches and in place, uh, the same philosophies, even though some of the coordinators have changed around. But, you know, if you look at Maryland over the years, uh, a couple of years ago, they had four offensive line coaches in four years. That change happens this year. But 
the consistency from the top down and, and keeping the same philosophies. You know, if you look at the way Durkin coached, you look at the way Edsel coached, the coordinators brought the style. Loxley brings the style. He just has to plug in the right pieces. I think it's a huge win for seeing year over year progress and year over year of the same attitude, the same system, the same strength and conditioning guys. You look at uh, year three of a program, and that's when you start to see wins like this, where they probably should not have won this football game tonight, but you know, you make one more play than the other guys, and well, certainly the ball did not bounce their way. It actually bounced in the way of Illinois, but they escaped. Did you agree with that strategy? Obviously, it worked. To put the game in the hands of of Petrino. No, it would have taken one or two more shots to get a touchdown, but hey, it worked. This is the well, I'm sure Bruce will be back. Strategy works out in the end. I mean, what do you take yeah. from this game is that a whole bunch of stuff went wrong with a whole bunch of players that at most had played five games together, mm. six. This is Leah's seventh game, uh, and they pulled it out. In a game that Maryland usually would find a way to lose, much like the uh, Washington football team last night, 10 points in five minutes – and uh, the legend of Leah grows. Yeah, I think so. And going back to what Bruce said, I think that's more Ryan Davis and Coach Loxley. They're working this program. They're going to trust their guys in the situations to win the game. And Petrino, yeah, he's been spotty, but that's that's Mike's guy at kicker. He's going to trust him when the game's on the line. That's what they practice. That's the standard they set is, no, it doesn't always work right. It's football. It's just like life. Things are going to go wrong. But when it's time to make the right play, especially the winning play, Maryland has to make that. That's been what they've been talking about in camp. If you watch the Unlocked show on YouTube, that's what Loxley has been talking about this year is when the moment is in our hands, when it's not in the ref's hands, when it's in our hands, we have an opportunity to make an impact on the football field. Can we do that? Can we hold ourselves to making the most out of our opportunities? And tonight, uh, somehow they managed to do that. And you know what? It's kind of hard to go through this game because they've lost every game for a long time that's been like this well they they have there were a lot of injuries on defense they rotated and rotated in the end you have uh talia going 32 for 43 350 yards fleet has 62 on the ground leah has 25 jacobs 24 boone who looked like a powerhouse there for a little bit fumbles he doesn't get back in on the receiving end, nobody gets 100. Demas does not get his touchdown. Demas has eight catches, 77. Jones, five for 70. Uh, they use Rock, maybe not as much as I would have liked. Uh, four for 70. Daryl Jones, a big <laughs> game, five for 66. Uh, I was impressed by uh, Mr. Rose up front, where's the 46 jersey. I was impressed by some of the big hits Nick Cross had. Lautez Rogers has a good game. A lot of injuries on defense. You mentioned that they don't have Nasil Kite, who wears 34 for most of the game. Uh, well, I mean, they didn't have him at all tonight. They didn't have him against yeah. Howard. It's a big loss when you really only have two defensive tackles who are ready to go at this level. It is. Maryland's still thin up front, and I think tonight showed it in a lot of ways. Uh, Finau in and out of being hurt. Uh, Kite not making the trip with the team. Uh, but speaks to the depth that Maryland's trying to build. A freshman or two gets in there. Jackson with another good game. He had one uh, against West Virginia, too. Uh, Taz Johnson, the St. John's College High School freshman, uh, got in the game when they needed him. A uh, couple guys missing in action for me. Uh, Tank Booker, not out there. Tank Booker, uh, Bam Booker, not out there in the rotation. So seems like there's competition under that first level for Maryland. At the end of the game, uh, the Terps kind of go heavy uh, in a set where I thought they would kind of back off and play pass defense. Merrill moves Greg Rose uh, to defensive end. He comes up with a big sack, then kicks him back inside. He makes another that, play. That Rose sack where they had to run Deshaun Holt in late, and he ends up lining up as a linebacker. He never gets to the defensive line. And the first time, Maryland has three linemen, and they get a sack right away. It's yeah, and if you notice that play, how the breaks go. Yeah, it, it was one of those because the first look for Peters was a wheel route to the right, and Hippolyte and Holt both covered the same player. Yep. They both covered the wheel route. 
and Peter's not able to get to a second look. If you go to Maryland's second level, uh, no Oseta Smith uh, in there tonight, uh, despite the lack of depth at middle linebacker. He must have been hurt. He wasn't in on specials, and he has been a special team's ace. Um, So there's some offensive Levante Gator. Levante Gator got himself thrown out. Yeah, gets himself thrown out and a big opportunity for him. Corey Cooley gets in there. Uh, not the best game from him. He was wearing the number zero jersey for the Terps, usually number six. Uh, and the safeties, though, I think this is a spot where we saw improvement. Jordan Mosley almost manages to get himself also uh, removed from the contest, but he escapes the targeting call. Bo Braid, big game for him back there uh, for the Terps. Looking for, I believe, now another cover safety. I just don't think Jordan Mosley can cut it. With the lack of depth at inside linebacker, you could be seeing him there. I think that uh, Mike Loxley is just committed to this rotation. And we talked about it, one of the long drives. Hippolyte was out. Uh, Ahmad McCullough, where his 19, played linebacker. Uh, Bo Brady and Dante Trader took the regular reps. That was the drive that took it inside of seven minutes, waiting for them to rotate out. They, they keep them in there. So now you have 30 guys, 35 guys who actually play and he's sticking with that rotation. I guess it works out in the long run. It worked out tonight. It's a game that feels like it went to overtime. We've just stayed up way too late, two nights in a row, watching a game with a team that we were rooting for. Had a quarterback who was the little train that wouldn't stop in both cases. Scored 10 points in five minutes. Both hit a field goal as the clock expires, and everybody goes home happy. I, I think that's enough for our Rick Jacklett sponsored Big Dog post game show here on Turp Talk. We will get uh, this posted. And for those who are coming over from the Sports Maven on Saturday morning, uh, welcome in and uh, go Terps. Mason, thanks for joining in. And thanks to Mark Murphy, Justin Murphy, and Bruce Bowser for making an appearance tonight. This is Wayne Viner for the Red Turtle Network. Good evening from Illinois, from Florida, from Baltimore, from Rockville, and from, from wherever you are. Good night.